Hey everybody, this is Charlie Weiser from EasyPiano.com, and I got something cool to show you today. And what I actually have there is a cycle of fourths run. So let me go ahead and break this down for you. Uh, here's what I'm actually doing. If you take a C scale and number the tones, one, two, three, four, you go up four up, you end up on F, okay? If I take an F major scale and I go up four, one, two, three, four, you end up on B flat. So here's what's happening. C to F is a fourth. F to B flat is a fourth. If we go up four in a B flat major scale, one, two, three, four, you end up on E flat. Okay? So from B flat to E flat is a fourth. Four up in an E flat major scale, one, two, three, four you end up on A flat, four up in A flat, one, two, three, four, you end up on D flat, okay? I'm gonna move down here. So we're on D flat, if we go up four in a D flat major scale, one, two, three, four, you end up on G flat. Four here, one, two, three, four, you end up on B. One, two, three, four, you end up on E. Let me come down here. So with E, one, two, three, four, you end up on A. One, two, three, four, you end up on D. Okay, one, two, three, four, you end up on G. And then if we go four up from there, we're back to C. Okay, so now what I've done is I have grouped our run into uh, threes, or three notes, groups of three. Okay, so for the first part of the run, we got C, F, to B flat. Now, instead of going up playing this E flat, I want to try to keep everything within the octave. So instead of going here, I'm going to play my B flat here. Or E flat, I mean. It's E flat, A flat, D flat. Instead of going up to the G flat, I'll play it right here. G flat, B, E. Instead of going up to the A, I'll play it here. Okay? Then it starts all over again. This way, we kind of pretty much keep things within the octave. Now, as far as fingering is concerned, usually I'll use like my first finger, pointer finger, and uh, the ring finger, or first finger, pointer finger, and the little finger. Either one works. Whatever is more comfortable for you. What I did there is I just played it for two octaves. So here, and then here, same thing. You can play as many octaves as you want. The sky is the limit. Now, let me show you the left hand fingering really quickly. So what I have, let's go down here. So same notes. Now, usually with the left hand, I'm playing my fifth finger or my little finger here, pointer finger, thumb. Same finger in each group of three. I'll go for another octave. Okay. And then what I'll do to make it interesting is I'll play the hands together. But here's what I'm doing. I'm not playing my hands one octave apart. I'm actually splitting an octave in between hands, okay? Okay, you can do it as uh, many octaves as you want. And then once you get better at it, you can uh, gradually start to speed it up. Okay, or even faster. Something like that. I was a little sloppy, but uh, you get the general idea. So anyway, there you have the cycle of fourths run. Now, what is the application? There are many different applications. For one, you can use, this is a way to practice your chords, you know, runs, whatever you want to do. So what I did there was I just played all of my major chords through the cycle of force. And again, you know, when you do that, it gives you an interesting sound. And 
and it starts all over again. Okay? So, I mean, you know, the fourths can be a way that you practice things. There it was chords. Now, if you're not familiar with all of those major chords like that, uh, check out my program, Four Chords You Need to Know. And with the Four Chords You Need to Know program, I actually take you through the major chord, I take you through the augmented chord, I take you through the minor chord, and the diminished chord. You know, we do that for each key. So we have the major, augmented, minor, diminished. Now do one more. We have a major, augmented, minor, diminished. Okay, but you can see as you practice things through the cycle of fourths, it gives you an interesting sound. And the sound is great because it's an easy sound to remember. So when you're practicing, if you hit something wrong, you'll know it right away and you'll be able to correct and adjust. Okay, so now what um, else can we use the cycle of fourths for? One of the things we can do is we can use the cycle of fourths, you know, as a way to move through chord progressions. So, for instance, if I am in the key of C, and let's say I do a 2-5-1 chord progression. So, in the key of C, let's just keep it simple. That's a 2 chord, 5 chord, 1 chord. So, what happens is if you look at that 2 chord, it starts on the second note of the C scale because that's why it's called the two chord. And then we go to the five, so one, two, three, four, five, we end up on G. Okay, and then we go to the one. So that gives me a two, five, one chord progression. Okay, so now with the chord progressions, that's a very basic chord progression, but if you take a look, we have two, five, if you look at these, you'll notice that they are a fourth away from each other. Okay, so that makes learning things a little bit easier. So, for instance, let's take another key. If I go to the key of E flat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I do a two to the five to the one, if you look at that, it's the same thing. I'll just put the E flat up here so you might be able to see it a little clearer. So that's, those are all fourths away. Okay, and that's the way a lot of your progressions actually move through the keys. Now, uh, what I did there, some of you might be like, okay, well, what are those chords that you're playing for a two and a five and a one? Um, I do have a program that goes into more detail because we're limited in time here on this video. But if you check out my program, The Secret Seven Numbers of Successful Piano Playing, I actually teach you how to play your scales in all 12 keys. I teach you how to play seventh chords, which are four note chords. I teach you how to play those in all 12 keys. And then I teach you how to play some of the uh, chord progressions that you need to know. Like for instance, I have the two, five, one chord progression in there and a bunch of other progressions. So again, if you're interested in learning that, uh, go check out my program at easypiano.com. You'll find a link up at the top of the page that says Courses. Just click on that link and you'll see the secret seven numbers of successful piano playing. So anyway, enough of the commercial. So I hope you have benefited from this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that way, when I come out with new videos, you'll be notified right away. And as usual, have fun and keep practicing.